for this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our patient, Brady, and Brady presents with significant pain secondary to first and second degree burns across his anterior shins before debridement of the dead skin. Which of the following is the most appropriate? So we have A, brief intense tens, B, modulated tens, C, conventional high frequency tens, and D is acupuncture like tens. All right. And if you're not familiar with TENS, that is actually T-E-N-S or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. All right. So let's go up to the top of the question. It says Brady presents with significant pain secondary to first and second degree burns across his anterior shins. Let's slow up there for a moment and, and let's make sure we're all on the same page. First and second degree burns. So we know that with the first degree that the patient has burned the, the epidermis, right? That top superficial layer of the skin. Uh, but with the second degree, we know that the patient has now gotten down into the dermis. Now, the one thing I can say for certain to you is that second degree burns are pretty god darn painful. All right. They're painful. It makes the skin very hypersensitive. You can get some blistering with that's weeping. All right. That has a serous fluid that weeps out of it. If you've ever burned your hand, uh, you, you know exactly what I'm talking about or ever been, you know, severely burned. You know exactly what I'm talking about. So I expect this patient to have some pain. All right. And it's across his anterior shins. Now, it says before debridement of the dead skin, which of the following is the most appropriate? Now, there are some physical therapists that participate in more wound care than others, right? Or, or in a clinic or at the hospital where they participate in wound care and they may do debridement in different types of it, whether it's uh, enzymatic debridement, mechanical debridement, sharps debridement, whatever it is. But here in the question stem, it says before debridement of the dead skin, which of the following is the most appropriate? So what can we say right now? Do y'all think, first of all, that this is going to feel good to the patient? I mean, can you imagine that you just burned yourself? You're very hypersensitive. You're very, very painful. And then now I'm going to come at you with whatever equipment, whether it's a surgical tool, whether it's mechanical debridement, whatever it is, and I am going to debride, take away that dead skin. I mean, that sounds pretty painful. All right. So the question is, which of the following would I be using as I'm going to debride, whether it be before or during or whatnot? Which type of tens would I use? All right. And so let me read off the answer choice again for those on the podcast. A is brief, intense tens. B is modulated tens. C is conventional high uh, frequency tens. And D is acupuncture like tens. All right. So if you're not familiar with TENS, again, let me just say that TENS is a pain modality. We're tending to try to reduce pain using electrical current or electrical stimulation. All right. And so A says brief, intense TENS. What is that really? I, I know some of y'all may have seen it come across your modality textbook, a practice exam, whatever it is. What is brief, intense, brief, intense TENS used for? Well, here's the deal. This one is used for procedural pain, really. It doesn't necessarily have to be debridement. It could be manual therapy. Your patient is really painful, but they need the manual therapy that you're going to provide. And so you use brief, intense TENS on them before you do whatever procedure it is, right? So we can use this for a patient who is going to undergo, this is key, write this down, procedural pain. This is a high frequency, high intensity form of TENS where we're actually trying to create pain. We really are. We're trying to create a different type of pain so that our patient doesn't feel that 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 really intense pain of things like the breeding dead skin. All right. So we are creating pain. Yes. But we're doing such in a way that is not like that really intense, aggravating torturous pain that you would get if you were debriding dead skin or dead tissue. All right. So I like brief intense tens here. It, it fits because it's for procedural pain. I'll go ahead and put a check mark that next to that one. Doesn't mean it's the right answer, but I like it right now. Let's look at B. B says modulated tens. Now modulated tens. If well, let, let's go about it in this way. Have you ever been in the clinic 
and you had a patient maybe laying down on the, the plinth and everything, they're at the end of treatment, and you decide to use IFC or TENS on that patient, right? And you let them sit there for maybe six minutes, seven minutes. Next thing you know, they're ringing the bell on you, like dinging it a thousand times. Like, oh, well, Kyle, I can't feel it anymore. Have you ever been in that type of situation? And what did you do? Most likely you increased the intensity, am I right? You went, you went in there, it's like, all right, it's okay, Mr. Bill, we're just going to increase the intensity, and now they can feel it again. Well, here's the deal. There is a setting on most TENS units that's called modulated. And modulated TENS is where it flips between different frequencies in order to not allow the patient to adapt to it. Because the reason why the patient can't feel it anymore is because they've adapted to the signal that's being sent by this electrical current. So if we use modulated TENS, it doesn't allow the patient to adapt to it and then they continue to feel it. All right, so here's the deal. Modulated TENS, is that what I'm looking for here? Does the question say anything about how the patient was using TENS before and now they're not really feeling it anymore? They adapted it to it? No, it doesn't say anything like that. So I just feel like modulated TENS is not really addressing the fact that we're about to do debridement and we need something to help block that pain, all right? So B, I don't like it, let's move to C. C says conventional high frequency TENS. Now, this is the most common form of TENS that we use out there in the clinic. It's called sensory TENS. It's high frequency. And we tend to use it for some type of acute injury. This is the one that your patient has maybe an ankle sprain or an MCL sprain or something like that. It's very acute. And we're going to go ahead and put some TENS or IFC on it in order to just calm down the overall level of pain. It's typically just some type of acute injury that we're using this with. All right. Now, again, it's sensory. It's not really long lasting. It's very short lived. You definitely wouldn't want to use this if you were doing some type of intense debridement procedure because this form of TENS really isn't going to cut it. The patient's still going to feel the, the procedure a lot and you're pretty much going to have conventional TENS that's not really helping you out much. All right, uh, we, so we can really throw this answer away. It's just ineffective for this type of procedure. So I don't like C. But, oh, we got one big one, all right? And I know you may have seen this before. D says acupuncture-like tens. Have you seen that? Acupuncture-like tens is one that comes up a lot, too. You may have known it as a, a noxious e-stem or noxious tens. This is the one where we're trying to evoke muscular contraction. It has a, a high intensity, and we're actually trying to create pain. All right, again, in order to release what they call endogenous opioids. Have you ever heard of the encephalins? Right? They're, they're, it's kind of like raiding your internal pharmacy and giving you this, 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 this pain reduction, but it's using your own like body's painkillers, the ones that you produce naturally. That's what acupuncture is there to do. It's there to help release those endogenous opioids, giving you a longer lasting impact. You can use this form of TENS for a lot longer period, but it's not as intense as brief intense TENS. So can I use acupuncture? You could. It's just not as effective as something like brief intense TENS that is for procedural pain. So what do I want you to remember about this whole thing? What do I want you to really pull from this is that brief intense TENS is used typically before or during some type of painful procedure that must be done, whether it's uh, debridement, it could be manual therapy, you know, whatever it is that's going to cause the patient pain, brief intense TENS is usually a, a very short treatment, less than 15 minutes, knock it out and help block any intense pain that the patient may feel during the treatment, all right? So what am I really saying to you? Big picture, brief intense TENS, A, is the right answer. Congratulations to those of you who got this question correct. This one is not easy by any means at all. All right. This is that whole electrical stem and really understanding, you know, what each of them do. And I'll tell you one thing that TENS is not my best friend. E-STEM is not my best friend, but I've come to have a somewhat caring relationship after I figured out what these specific forms of TENS do, like what they're used for. As soon as I figured that out, answers for practice exams and stuff started to jump out at me. It started to become a lot easier. 
So if you want to excel in this department on your MPTE, don't just look to just memorize things. Try to understand why are these forms of tens even used to begin with. And I believe that that's going to help you out a ton. Does that make sense? All right. But as always, I don't want to leave you with a basic explanation, just some basic strategies. I want to give you a cheat sheet to help you understand the top three most common forms of tens, why they're used, what their frequencies are and all that stuff that you would need to know for the MPTE. Does that sound good to you? So those on the podcast right now, I want you to go into your show notes, click the link in there and you can get your free cheat sheet.